two infrastructure bonds have just been reopened. They were listed on 23rd of January this month. I'm going to show you how the numbers are going to look like for somebody who invests 1 million or less than 1 million, since it's going to be different with somebody who invests more than 1 million. This is an infrastructure bond. An infrastructure bond is simply the government borrowing money for the sake of using that money to invest in infrastructural projects. Think of building a dam, think of building, uh, maintaining a river, something of the sort, any infrastructure related development. Now the government is currently seeking 70 billion from these two treasury bonds. They want 70 billion. These two bonds have been reopened. They were issued before. They've just been reopened. The first one is the RFB 2022-14. Initially, it was first listed in 2022, and it was supposed to run for 14 years. Since it's being reopened again, this time, if you invest, it's going to be for 11.8 years. At least, I'm going to show you how it's going to be less than 11.8 years under certain conditions, which I'll explain using the maths. Um, the coupon rate is 13.938%. This is the interest rate. This is going to determine how much interest you're going to be getting every year. Now, in this example, the first uh, bond that is offering 13.938%, we're going to assume that you want to invest 2 million. I'll explain to you later why this 2 million is important and why I chose it. There are certain conditions to this bond, these two bonds. When you read the prospectus, which I'm going to leave a link to in the description, you can download it and check it for yourself. The prospector states that if you're going to invest more than 1 million, you're going to get back your money in two phases, which we call amortization. Amortization is how you're going to get back your money and it's a form of restructuring the debt repayment. For example, if you invest 2 million, you are lending money to the government worth 2 million. In 2030, you're going to get half of the amount of money that you loaned the government. That is in 2030. When you do the calculation, you're going to notice that you're going to get back your money in six years, the first round. Think of it as you uh, think of it as you lending money to the government. And the government tells you that instead of you getting your money back in 11.8 years, let me just say like 12 years, they're like, you know what? We will be paying you interest every single year for the next six years or for the next 12 years but we are going to pay you half of the original amount of money that you gave us. Remember how a bond works is such that every year, assuming that you invest 2 million, you lend the government 2 million with this 13.938%. Every single year, you're going to be earning 278,760 exactly infrastructure bonds are not taxed at all they are tax free that's why everybody has been waiting for them now imagine you are getting or rather not imagine this is like facts you're going to get 278,760 every single year Every single year, you make this amount of money without tax. It's tax free. It's tax exempt. All right. But according to that rule, according to that prospectus, you're going to get back half of the amount of money that you lent the government in November 2030. November 2030. And the other repayment method is such that you're going to get the other half at the end of 2036, such that it's now going to be a total of 11.8 years. In short, the government wants to pay you back the money that you lent them in two phases. You're going to get back half of the amount of money that you lent them after six years, and you're going to get back half the amount of money that you lent them after the next six years. That's what it means. But then there's a certain condition to these two bonds, such that if you invest 100,000 shillings, or rather if you invest a million or less than a million, you're not going to get back half of the amount of the money that you lend them. In this case, you're not going to get back your 1 million. You're going to get back the entire amount. That is the one rule of thumb. 
if you invest 1 million or less than 1 million, that is if you lend the government 50,000 to 50,000, you lend them 600,000 since it's less than 1 million, your bond is only going to last for six years and it's not going to last for the 11.8 years or 12 years or so. It's going to last for half of the period that is remaining. Now, let me explain using this math. You lend the government 2 million. Year one, you're going to make 278,760. Since the interest in a treasury bond is paid out twice a year, according to this bond, if you invest here, you're going to get back half of this amount twice a year. You're going to get it in May this year. And you're also going to get the payment in November. These are the two payment periods. Remember, I'm going to leave a link uh, to these prospectors. But you're going to get 139 in May. 139,380 in November. Every six months, every six months, in as much as the first time is not going to be after six months since we are in January and the bid is going to be successful in Feb. So Feb, February, March, April, May, the first one is going to be paid out after three months, but then after it's going to be after six months. So in May, in November, the next payment is going to be in May. That is after six months from here, which is 2025, and then the other payment is going to be November. It's going to be alternating May, November, May, November, until a certain point where it's going to change to uh, April and October. But don't worry about that. But in short, you're going to get 139,380 twice a year. For the next six years, since for the whole year you're going to be making 278,760, you are going to make an interest or a coupon of 1,672,560. This is just half the period. So after six years, that is in November 2030, you're going to get back 50% of the amount of money that you lent the government, of the initial amount of money that you lent the government, in this case, is 2 million. So this is the first scenario. Actually, this is the actual scenario. After the government has paid you back 1 million, the government is now going to have your 1 million. It's not going to have 2 million. You lend the government, let me write it here. You lend the government 2M. But you get back your 1M after 6 years. 1M. The government is going to remain with your 1M. For the remaining six years until 2036, the interest is going to be calculated based on this 1 million and not the initial 2 million. Uh, again, the interest rate applies, the coupon rate. This time, after six years, that is from 2030 to 2036, every single year you'll be making 13.98%, the original interest rate, times the 1 million that now the government owes you. In, we, in this case, you're going to be making 139,380 per year. If you want to split this into two, it's going to be 69,690, which you're going to be paid every six months, every six months, every six months. That's how it's going to look like. May, you get 69,690. November, you get 69,690. May, you get this, then you get the other one. So for the remaining six years, after the initial one million was paid back to you by the government you're going to make 836 to 80. This is amortization, such that the government is going to pay you half the amount of money that you owe them at the end of six years. In the meantime, you're going to be earning an interest. And the second period, for the second period, they're going to pay you an interest based on the 1 million that they are now remaining with that is going to be used to calculate the interest rate and then you get back your 1 million since you now owe them 1 million. This is the first scenario. And this is, um, or rather, this is the first scenario where I'm using 2 million for this IFB bond. Now, the second scenario, remember I told you that if you invest less than 1 million in your CSD account, this second uh, application is not going to apply to you. You're not going to have this in mind because there's a rule of thumb in that prospectus that says any amount up to 1 million per CSD account at amortization will be redeemed in full. This is the first amortization, the first one that is going to happen after six years. So 
if after six years, had you invested one million, now forget about this two million calculation, had you invested one million, this second part is not going to apply to you because you're now going to get back your one million. In that case, this bond is not going to last for 11.8 years. For you, it's going to last for half of the shelf life, if I can say that which is six years. If you invest 250,000, if you lend the government 50,000, you're going to get back your interest every year for the next six years and it's over, game over. I used this example to explain that, but this time I just used a different, uh, rather the second uh, infrastructure bond that was listed. We can still use this one to illustrate this. We also have another infrastructure bond that has been issued, which is IFB1 2023-17. It was first issued in 2017, and it was meant to last for 17 years. But since it's being reopened, it has been reopened again, it's now going to last for 15.1 years. The coupon rate, the interest rate, is 14.399%. This one is slightly higher than this just slightly, because this is 13.9, this is 14.3, so a difference of around 5%, 5 to 6, 7. It's even less than 1%. In this case, let's take, for example, you lend the government 1 million. Okay? You're like, I'll only give you 1 million. I'm not giving you 1.1 million, 1.2 million, 1.5 million, just 1 million. In this case, uh, every year you're going to be making 14.399% of the 1 million, which is 143,990. Remember, treasury bonds are paid out twice a year. Every six months, you're going to be making half of this amount. In this case, in March and September, you'll be getting 71,995. This March, yes, this March 2025, you're going to get um, 71,995. September this year, you're going to get another 71,995 and the cycle continues every six months. In March, you get this next year. In September, you get this next year. It will continue until the time period shifts from March, September to Feb, uh, August. Yeah, but don't worry about that. I'm going to leave a link uh, for that prospectus. A link to that prospectus for you to check it out. Now, my main interest is this. Remember that rule of thumb that is in that prospectus that says that if the initial amount of money that you invested in is less than one million, you're going to get back your full amount in the first redemption period, the full amount. In this case, you invested one million and the bond is for 15.1 years. The first redemption is going to happen in Feb 2033. Again, amortization. The government wants to repay you back half of the amount that you invested in them in the first redemption in as much as you're getting your interest. And the government will pay you the remaining amount of money at the end of the 15.1 years. So in Feb 2023, for you, it's not going to be this scenario. It's just going to be the full redemption. You're going to get back your one million. But before the eight years lapse, every single year, again, you're going to be making 143, 990, 143, 990, 143, 990. What does this mean? If you are an investor and you want to invest less than one million or one million, for a bond that goes for 15.1 years, it's going to be for around eight years for you. It's going to be for half of the period that is during redemption. You're going to get back your money, not after 15.1 years, but you're going to get back your money uh, within the time scope of, 80, of eight years. For somebody who had invested two million in this bond, this is going to be the scenario where you're going to get back half of the two million, one million, uh, at the end of the first eight years and at the end of the next eight years, you're going to get back your full amount. The beauty of investing in infrastructure bonds is that they are not taxed at all. They are non-taxable. Let me give you a scenario where this is not an IFB bond. This is not an IFB bond. It's just the normal regular bond that is taxed. In this case, you want to invest one million. Let me just write it here. You want to invest one million this is not an IFB bond. 
since the time period is 15.1 years, bonds that are for more than 10 years, 10 years and above, they're usually taxed at 10%. For bonds that are for less than 10 years, they usually tax 15% withholding tax. Now, if you invested 1 million in a regular bond that is not an IFB bond, the uh, tax is going to be 10%. In this case, of course, the interest rate is going to be 14.399. Every single year, you'll be making this amount of money. But this is not the amount of money that is going to hit your bank account. Nah. What's going to hit your bank account is going to be 0.9 percent i don't know if you can see this but it's going to be 0.9 percent 0.9 not 0 0.9 it's going to be 90 percent of this amount of money uh, the 10 percent is the tax in this case the 10 percent is going to be uh when you remove zero here you're going to pay 14,399 14,000 let me write it here. If if it was taxed, it's going to be the tax is going to be fourteen thousand three hundred and ninety nine. This is around uh, fourteen thousand four hundred. Imagine you've lost fourteen thousand four hundred. This is a lot of money that is going to tax. That's why infrastructure bonds are the best bonds because they're going to give you an advantage one is that they are not taxed so you get to have your 14400 back this is this is good money you can even invest it in a you can put it in a money market fund account this tax the other benefit is such that if you are a small investor you just have 50k you have 200k you have 500k which is less than a million you're going to get back your money within a shorter period of time than somebody who is investing uh 10 million because for them this amortization rule applies but for somebody who has less than 1 million they get back their money as fast as they can before inflation eats up their money what do you think which infrastructure bond would you invest in the first one that goes for 11.8 years which is like roughly 12 years or the second one that goes for 16 years and how much money do you feel is good for somebody to invest in thank you for watching this video like it and see you in the next one